Hi, I'm Barbie, and welcome to Half Calf TV. <laughs> or, I mean, Barbie Life in the Dream House. Life in the Dream House. With the new Barbie movie coming out within weeks. I mean, days. <gasps> I decided it was time to pay respects to arguably the best Barbie show that there is, Barbie Life in the Dream House. I've got the clothes from every career I've ever had. You went to the moon? You haven't? Now Barbie has been in a lot of movies and also a few TV specials, but this was the first time that Barbie got to be in her own TV show. Hot off the heels of Toy Story 3 and with Barbie practically stealing every scene she's in, comes a show with a very similar comedy style. Fast-paced, full of slapstick, and full of doll humor. Although this makes for a show that goes off the rails from time to time, more often than not, for the better, I feel like the writers of the show felt they had a requirement to make the Barbie characters as relatable and insane as humanly possible. Now, a bit of history before we get into it. Barbie Life in the Dream House only really exists because in the 1980s, Mattel saw a decline in Barbie and panicked. They had produced two TV specials featuring Barbie called Barbie and the Sensations, Rockin' Back to Earth, and Barbie and the Rockers, Out of This World. These specials featured Barbie as the star of her own rock band. These specials did, mm, all right in comparison, a score of 5.3 out of 10 and 6.3 out of 10, according to IMDb. Even with such mediocre scores, this was only the start of Barbie's total media takeover. In 2001, Bratz dolls came out and threatened Barbie even more. So Mattel considered some interesting tactics. But eventually, the consultants saw that girls were spending more time playing online games and less time with dolls. Since home video or direct-to-video was popular at the time, Mattel decided that this was the perfect time to release a Barbie movie. Thus, Barbie and the Nutcracker was born. A true beauty for us Barbie lovers back in the day. But I'm so hungry, I feel weak, no, faint. In 2011, Stars Animation Toronto was given the chance and produced the first non-film Barbie production for Mattel. Then. Barbie Life in the Dream House was born. Barbie Life in the Dream House was originally released by Arc Studios, or also known as Stars Animation Toronto, and Mattel in 2012 as a short web series on YouTube. This series would be posted on the official Barbie website as well, and would later appear on Nickelodeon and Netflix, with the latter being aired in the wrong order and missing a lot of episodes for some reason. The best way to watch the show, and the way I did, is through the YouTube account. There you can watch all 77 episodes. Luckily, they are short, so you can binge them all in an afternoon. Since Life in the Dream House came out in 2012, it clearly took influence from popular reality TV at the time, especially cutaway jokes called confessionals. These were done to parody those same exact reality TV shows. I'll never understand high fashion. I'm feeling kind of woozy. Am I the only one thinking that the gorge thing is getting a little old? I've known Barbie since we were in matching cribs. I hang out at her crib every day. I text Barbie so much, she's got a separate phone just for me. Here's the thing. Ah! Honestly, it parodied these reality TV shows a lot better than most that tried. The real draw to this show is the humor that takes these established characters and turns them into chaotic parodies of their originals. This, of course, was done while keeping the qualities that make them them. This show mainly takes place at the Dream House. It's in the title. Barbara Millicent Roberts, yes, that's her real name, is our title character, Barbie. Barbie lives with her sisters, Skipper, Stacy, and Chelsea. Skipper is the older sister and is tech savvy, while Stacy is organized and sporty. Chelsea is very competitive and also a bit whiny, just like a normal child. Eyes on the road and keep the quarters coming. Barbie has her own personal... Can I say that on YouTube? <laughs> In Ken. 
I got it, Barbie. Oh, Ken, it's like you have some kind of superpower that tells you when I need help. <laughs> superpower. Wouldn't that be something? Ken is her boyfriend, but the level this man bends backwards for her, it's a good thing that they're dolls and very flexible. Barbie ready for our date yet? He always looks on the bright side and is never really upset. Karen's fear him. How could you forget that? I can't believe you've never used such a great gift. Where is it? <laughs> I know it's not much, but... <gasps> a charm bracelet! I love it! And I've always wanted one! Barbie doesn't just have her sisters and Ken, though, as she is surrounded by a supporting cast of characters that all stand on their own. Even the most wild of these characters can't take over Barbie, though. They all seem to coexist in this Barbie world, with Barbie being the anchor that holds the world down. Now, on to the rest of these wonderful Barbie characters. You're joking. Barbie's vile nemesis is the evil frenemy, Raquel. Raquel is the narcissistic antagonist, I mean, the most fabulous doll that wants to have whatever Barbie has. This is sometimes literally, like with her crush on Ken. Killer Bee! Oh, Raquel, it's just a butterfly. Isn't she pretty? Oh, I'd love a picture of that. It is also figuratively, like when we see how perfect and put together Barbie is. Raquel is constantly trying to take the spotlight from Barbie, which leads to some absolutely hilarious moments. Hey, everybody, get a load of me! Uh, wow, I wanted one of those. What? How? Look on the bright side, Raquel. You did want to be internet famous. Skipper, today's the day I prove to Ken that I'm better than Barbie with something he can't ignore. A scorecard! I've devised a cleverly weighted... <laughs> Raquel exists as the butt of most of the jokes, followed closely by her brother, Ryan. He ate all my sushi-grade ahi tuna! That was for me! And the babes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a closet full of handsome. Fact. Barbie's having a sleepover. Fact. When girls are scared, they jump into the arms of the nearest boy. Fact. I. And the nearest boy. <laughs> you fool! Ryan is the rival of Ken, who has a thing for Barbie. This dynamic works better, I believe, as Ken and Ryan are not friends at all, but have the best synergy in the show. I think you'll find it's a two-man job. When's the other man showing up? Can't get you in. Uh, step back a bit? A little bit more. Uh, oh! That's a keeper. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> what do you think you're doing? Uh... Lurking with intent to scare another guy's gal. Well, not on my watch! On the ground, perp! Ugh. Ryan is basically his sister. Self-centered and obsessed with Barbie. He loves his music as much as he loves himself. This one goes out to you, baby. Your heart is... The song's a maze, but I gotta get back on the runway. Talk soon. <sighs> mm. Taffy? If I'd wanted that reaction, I would have played it for my agent. No matter the roadblocks Ryan runs into, he always bounces back and is ready to fight Ken for Barbie's affection. Which obviously doesn't make sense since Barbie and Ken are a very established couple. Ryan can have his ribs though. Mm. So you need to leave. Barbie then has a variety of friends that star with her in different episodes. Sometimes they're in the same episode as well. These friends are Summer, Midge, Nikki, and Teresa. Summer is the competitive and sporty doll of the group, always pushing the limits. Summer is the complete opposite of Midge, so they tend to butt heads a bit. I've got a five letter word for boring. M-I-D. Let's do something together. Midge is actually Barbie's longest friend as they grew up with each other in Wisconsin. Midge is an older doll, so she's very much still into the classics and gets confused by modern language. Check you later. Did you understand any of that? <laughs> this comes from the fact that Midge was the first doll created to be Barbie's friend. She also likes Ryan? A weird choice, but we're here for it. Midge is just so weird and her jokes are absolutely perfect. I mean, whole wheat. Whole wheat? <laughs> you know I don't eat spicy food. Nikki is smart and an all-around good friend. 
She's there to keep everyone together. Someone really needed in this Barbie world. That's it! I've had just about enough of her. <laughs> Sorry about that. At least your hair won't have any calluses. Teresa is the live and let live doll and can be a bit ditzy at times. She's definitely a conspiracy believer and is one of Nikki's close friends. I've been sleeping for two days straight to get ready for it. Bananas is super excited to be in the big dog show. Show them how it's done, Bananas. I'm about to end this man's whole career. And I couldn't forget Barbie's pets, Blissa, Taffy, and Tawny. Oh, and also Closet. Barbie's AI closet helper that is a bit sassy and even considers Ken to be his father. Yes, Ken is a father, ladies. The show relies heavily on the fact that it takes place in the world of talking dolls. They live in a house that seems to be able to change, expand, and contort to whatever whims they need. Barbie's closet isn't just a walk-in, it requires a golf cart to explore. This goes for everything in the house, as they can attach stickers with pictures of furniture on them and then pull the item out of the void. It's uncanny how Barbie and her friends live in such a wild doll world, yet they sometimes act human. There's also quite a bit of meta humor tucked in. Barbie and Ken have been together for over 43 years, aka the time of when they were first introduced on a commercial. They constantly talk about their joints and how inflexible or flexible they are, depending on how old their doll type is. <gasps> You're fully articulated? I can only do this. Ah! The weather being sweet for 14 years in a row? Raquel calling Chelsea Kelly? If it isn't my favorite Barbie sister, Kelly, right? It's Chelsea. The museum of items sold separately? There are just a lot. <laughs> Many of the jokes the show throws at the audience rely heavily on the fact that the world they live in is made of plastic. Credit cards in the show are always these massive pieces. The cars can be wound up or have batteries put in them. There's even a reoccurring joke with glitter being a tradable commodity. <gasps> Glitter! Barbie is also shown to be able to change outfits with a quick jump off screen. Most of the episodes are short, with random bursts of jokes. But the longest episode with the most consistency and some of the best jokes has to be The Amaze Chase. The Amaze Chase is based off of the Great Race film of 1962 and the Amazing Race reality game show that started in 2001 and is still on to this day. This episode is a bit different than others. Every character is introduced and put into teams. Each team wants to beat Barbie. No matter how much they love her, the thirst of beating Barbie outweighs friendship. What's cool about this episode is that it shows the different cars that coincide with the different dolls. This episode allows all characters to really shine, especially Midge, Raquel, Ryan, and of course, the best host ever, Randy Bravo. I'm your host, Randy Bravo. There are plenty of Ryan and Ken moments as well, so don't worry about that. <laughs> also, Closet is here. Almost forgot. This road trip will be a perfect chance for us to bond as father and son, uh, inventor and inventor. Um, yeah, that. The crew is all getting ready for the chase when Skipper gets mad about Barbie accidentally unlocking her journal with the most weak password I've ever heard. If you live in the world of Barbie and think Obvi is a good password, <sighs> Skipper gets upset and joins Raquel's team. Skipper is leaving Team Barbie and joining Raquel's team? What? 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 Off goes the race. The race starts with the most early 2000s reality TV show intro ever. It really brings me back. The contestants will race to locations across the country and complete challenges at each stop. The last team to finish a challenge is eliminated. Raquel wins the first checkpoint. They then have to climb around Mount Rush Barbie? looking for iconic Barbie items. Teresa and Summer are the first to be eliminated. Did I mention the pets are also racing and end up in Area 51? They did what we couldn't. Naruto running was not enough. Next, they have to collect glitter from the geyser. 
Minge and Nikki end up having the most glitter, but are eliminated. Unfortunately. Gosh, that's what I get for running in slow motion. After the geyser is a ski slope. Barbie gets there first this time and gets to pick her skis. Ken and Ryan are disqualified for their issues. Yeah, all right, we won. Sorry, only one racer per team. You're disqualified and eliminated. That leaves Barbie and Raquel's team. They arrive at the Sequin Waterfalls, which is a redemption quest. Midge is the shining character here. She goes selflessly down the waterfall and brings her team back in. Too dangerous for my taste. I'm going back to the camper to work on my Sudokus. Only one square left. <gasps> Sudoku! Oh! Got it! All right! You go, Midge! This is where Raquel says, Avi. Again, everyone in this world does and opens Skipper's audio diary. Skipper finally realizes that her audio diary has the worst password ever, and she joins Barbie again. I didn't do it on purpose. Not that I wouldn't, but this was an accident. Isn't it obvious? Password accepted. I can't believe my own sister would do such a thing. Ooh. <laughs> well, they got over that quickly. Raquel tries sabotaging Barbie's car and leaves before our man Randy Bravo can give the go. Wait, I didn't say go! No fair! I always say go! I'm the go guy! Midge and Nikki are disqualified for crashing their car, so that just leaves Barbie again. After trying Ken's lawn, Poofa, Barbie releases the back of her RV and takes off, leaving Ryan all alone. Uh-oh! My water wings are back there! Barbie catches up and Ken can see the light. Did I mention Raquel kidnapped Ken? Yes, that happened. This is until everybody starts bouncing in the back of the hot tub and causes Barbie to slow down. Raquel comes just so close to winning, she can taste it. She can only think of one thing, herself. Her downfall to the end. Her car battery huh? literally dies right before the end, and then Barbie comes in for the absolute steal. Of course, Raquel tries ruining everything, but nothing can defeat Barbie. Hold me. The amazed chase really shows insight to the rest of the Barbie episodes. This one was a special, so it was much longer and more put together. The regular episodes are more sporadic, but still produce the same vibe. If you are interested in watching the full series, I'd at least tell you to watch The Amazed Chase to get a feel for the show. And also, it's just a hilarious episode altogether. Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse has to be one of the most iconic Barbie TV shows thus far. There are so many meme-worthy moments, and TikTok has taken some of them, so you know it's good. Right? I win! But in any regard, it's an amazing show, and I really wish there was more. Or maybe the amount is just right so that it's not saturated. If you really want an easygoing show with a lot of random jokes, I highly recommend watching Barbie Life in the Dream House. It really hits that spot of, I want to watch something on and off again and not feel lost. It's chaotic and fun and kind of relaxing to watch in a way. I could only really capture a small amount of this show's iconicness and it was so hard picking what to show. It's very nostalgic for me, and I wish I could watch it for the first time ever again. So please, if you're interested, give Barbie Life in the Dream House a try. It's the best. Obvi. They'll be back. Hi everyone. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I wanted to try to do something kind of similar to my history of cosplay video, but a little just more wild, I guess. Um, but in all seriousness, I really do love this show and it's actually very hilarious. I'm so sorry if you can hear the people mowing. <laughs> Always at the best times, am I right? 
But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate it. Um, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.